So I'm able to, you know, do that during the day and craft my day around that, having a breakfast and hitting there, maybe a good meal. I think, I, and since I work nights, I have all day, so I, I can keep that. But when you're traveling on the road and the hotel gym isn't great, you're a little tired, uh, maybe I, so what I try to do now is I try to work out really hard at home when I'm home or in that routine of, of familiar gyms. And I use the road now for rest, just for rest days. Because I do have a, I am susceptible to overtrain. Rise Grind Repeat Podcast. I have a great guest, great friend, ESPN Sports anchor, a play-by-play broadcaster for NHL games, college hockey. He's also the host of The Point and a philanthropist. He has a charity, the Bucci Overtime Challenge. Can't wait to discuss that and talk about it. It's a lot of fun. But before we get into it, John Buccigrass, welcome. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. This is like the busy season for you. This is Almost like, I don't want to say tax season because taxes are kind of a negative thing, but NHL playoffs going on. We got the NHL draft coming up. A lot of things I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about mindset a little bit too and and how you are able to like, how do you, what does your day look like? Because you're in Connecticut at ESPN, you're you're traveling for for games and whatnot. So like, how, how did you get into broadcasting? What was the background? I know you had a little bit, you played hockey growing up and your dad was a big influence, but but just let's start there. How did, how did you get into broadcasting? Yeah, just always loving sports growing up. My dad was a big sports fan. So, you know, watching on TV, playing as a, as a little kid, you know, when you just you play every sport. And so you just dive into all aspects. And certainly watching games on TV was a part of it. Probably didn't know it at the time, but I was, you know, kind of attracted to the whole production of TV. You know, I thought it was just the game. And the broadcaster was just kind of a part of the game, you know, part of the whole uh, the whole process. But I realized looking back now, I probably did have a an affinity and attraction to any kind of production, whether it be, you know, a TV talk show uh, or a sporting event, anything like that. Any kind of production involving, you know, music and emotion and and obviously video and audio. And so looking back now, that's probably what it was. At the time, I just thought it was an offshoot of sports and just a a plane myself. But it was probably more than that, bigger than that. And so, you know, once I realized how much I enjoyed that, creating things on my own in my in my house, in my bedroom with a tape recorder. um, And then, okay, then I want to maybe do this one day. ESPN comes along when I'm 13, 14 years old. And so, you know, just figure, I guess, I, I guess I'll go to college. That's what people seem to be doing and find a place where I can do these things, uh, you know, broadcast and be a disc jockey on the radio and have a campus TV station and write for the school newspaper. So I found a small school that did that and went there for four years. And then after that, you just look for your first job, you know, in, in television in, in, a, in a, a small place. I Mine was on Cape Cod, a very tiny little operation on Cape Cod with seven or eight people who just did a local newscast in the middle of Cape Cod. And that's where it just kind of started August of 1989. And I haven't missed a paycheck since it's just, you know, I've had three jobs since then. I was there for five years, Providence for two and now ESPN for 27. And uh, each time I change jobs, my last day was a Friday and my first day was a Monday. So I've gone, I've gone, uh, you know, these last 34 years um, without, you know, without missing a week of television work. So it's, uh, I've been lucky in that regard. Um, it's just how it kind of worked out. Sometimes you leave a job, you don't start for two months. It's just mine. They were, they needed me right away. Kind of, that was kind of the, the thing. And, and I, I probably at the time I couldn't afford to miss a paycheck back then either. Yeah. T- money was tight. So that's how just basically the, you know, how it works very simple. And I, you know, a lot of people who reach out to me wanting to get a job at ESPN or wanting to get a job here. I, you know, I always tell them, well, have you applied for that job? Like that's, you have to actually apply for the job, ask about the job. And not just wish about the job. And, you know, the first the first step is actually applying for it and showing interest in it and w- not wanting to work there. So that's how that's how kind of things went for me. Yeah, it's you know, it's 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 interesting because so so for me, like my it's I, I grew up listening to. So, I you know, played hockey in, in New England, started playing when I was six and my dad. So all winter it was we're driving around new england right and we're listening yeah. to uh chuck caton on the radio doing uh hartford whaler games or you know if, if i'm home i'm listening to um 
um, who was it? Uh, he's a Tampa Bay, uh, Rick Peckham, right? Rick so Rick Peckham yeah. was doing um, play-by-play yeah. for for Sports Channel at the time. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because I when I went to college is, is when around you, I think, I think that's when NHL Tonight started. Right. So I think it was you. It yep. might have been you and Bill Pito initially. Yeah, Bill was, yeah, Bill was first, 1995. And okay. uh, yeah. And then I, I I became the full time host in 1998, the fall of 98. 98. Yeah. So it's just it's crazy because we would watch as you know, so me and my my high school and college line mate, we would get back. We'd have a late practice. So we would I was at uh, Johnson Wales University. So we got, we yep. were able to practice, our practice facility was uh, Providence College. So where the Providence oh, wow. Friars played, you know, that was our practice facility. So we were spoiled, yeah. and uh, but we'd come home and the game would be over and we'd turn on NHL tonight and get the, get the recap with you. And, and I, and at the time, I think, I think Ray Ferraro had started maybe was, was during he- the playoffs. Yeah. During the playoffs, he would come and, you know, he would, he was still, he was still a player. Okay. You know, right. Until the early 2000s. It was one you know, yeah, his teams, he was on the Kings and they weren't making the playoffs. So he would come and do TV work yeah. uh, during the playoff season because he knew that's what he wanted to do. And now he's and he's probably the best at it right now. So yeah. that was yeah for him. That started 25 years ago. You know, so so it's, it's so interesting because I was going to do as I'm doing some some research. I mean, I, obviously, we, we've known each other for a bit, but just doing additional research and the whole chicken parm thing. I knew there was a connection with Ray and I'm like, I got to right. research like where that <laughs> came from. And I, I think it was like three nights ago. I forgot what game he was ca- he was calling or he was in the behind the glass and he was talking about something that he wore a white suit one day and he spilled chicken right. parm on it. And it was like the sauce or is that is right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just you know we usually we eat in a t-shirt like this, and then right before we go on, we'll put on a shirt and tie. But we had kind of hang out at work, just in golf shirts or whatever. And he just happened to have his white dress shirt on before we ate, and made that mistake. So yeah, a little piece dropped in his plate and splashed a little marinara on there. And of course, anything like that happened. We don't ignore that kind of thing. We cut we we point attention to it once we get on TV. <laughs> That's right. what makes it fun. That's right. what makes the show fun. So kind of make fun of his sloppy eating. So when he went back to playing the next year for the Thrashers, uh he's when he whenever he would score a goal, I was just kind of, I would just scream chicken parm Ray Ferraro just as kind of like a shout out to him for our times together and eating after we work out and that one incident. So it's kind of a combination of us both being Italian. Yeah. And then yeah, it caught on fast. He said he'd go down the airports and people would scream, "Chicken farm, chicken farm." Well, so, yeah, yeah it's like have a nickname, over, you know, after a something you'd buy on a menu at a restaurant. It's kind of funny. It's like you know, meatloaf or uh, turkey, hey, turkey and gravy. Hey, meatloaf. And of course, yeah. some people are called. There was a meatloaf. He sang. Meatloaf. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, hey, ribeye. Hey, you know, whatever. So hey, chicken cacciatore. How you doing? <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous. It became kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess chicken parm. There could be a lot worse, right? Meatloaf, right? Yeah, could be, could be exactly. worse. But, it's not know. a bad. Thing. Everyone loves chicken parm. It yeah. Never disappoints. Yeah. Well, and, and I have to say, like, it's been you know, going through some of those tough years. So after NHL Tonight was off the air, ESPN loses the NHL, and then it's yeah. like the Outdoor Network. <laughs> I yep. mean, versus then it turned to ver. Like it was, it yep. was just hard to find. You know, hockey, and then. And on top of it, I th- the NHL was kind of going through a transition. And, and, and I looking back, like, I mean, again, being a Whalers fan, it was brutal for me to see them move to Carolina. Brutal. Because that was that was me and my dad. You know, that was my yep. childhood was right. one of the rare, you know, being in Connecticut, rare Whalers fans, believe it or not, amongst my friends. Because, you know, most people, my, my friends were Bruins fans or Rangers or, or Islanders, it wasn't not a lot of Connecticut, you know, and, they, and they'd always, you know, the Whalers, they had a couple good seasons, um, maybe a handful, um, but it was very, it, 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 you know, they would, they would always ride you on that. So, so for me, it was very, you know, when Gary Bettman came along, it's like, man, why, you know, you're, and this was before um, the uh, what, what's it called with the, the, the cap and everything like that. And that would have helped okay. the small, small market teams like Quebec and, and whatnot. Right. So, so I was very kind of bitter for a while, Carmonis moving and, and, and that piece, but, you know, and then the whole glowing puck, there was just this transition of like, I almost like I, I took a step away from it for a bit, or it was just like, you know, um, but, but then the changes that he's made, the one thing I'll say about the NHL and Gary Bettman is 
he's adapt they they've i think done a great job adapting to the changes that are happening to make the sport better where a lot of, and, and, and other sports are doing that now but there was a lot of tradition tied to a lot of other sports that especially baseball that they just couldn't get away from and it's like listen we got to draw fan we got to get fans involved we got to make the game more exciting and i think batman's done that i i appreciate the expansion the seattle kraken and and seeing that and the talent has just I was talking to him again, my college uh, teammate the other day, and he just says, you know, the 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 skills, the 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 hands that these kids have now, the fundamental it's just it's insane compared to you know back when we were playing. So um, it's it's just great to see that that I believe the NHL, and it's great that that uh, ESPN's picked up the, the NHL again because it's such a great like the the point. Uh, the show that you're hosting now and, and just the slew of analysts, the talent there, you know, if you go even to, you know, I, I love seeing like Linda Cohn. I mean, she's been, you, you, yeah. Linda Cohn, Steve Levy have been kind of the, the champions, I guess, if you will, all those years that the, that the NHL wasn't there. It's like, right. you knew, you know, you'd slide in the little, you know, the terms that, that all, you know, the, the hockey players are aware of. And, and so it's just, it's just nice that, that you're still there. You're like the staple of, of hockey for ESPN. And, and I think I speak for a lot of uh, fans, players and whatnot. It's just, it's just great that, that you, you're a staple at ESPN and a champion for, for hockey. So definitely appreciate that. You know, it, it was a long time without it from 2004 till, uh, you know, till 2022. So it was a, uh... It was a long desert, but yeah, it's great that it's back and the game is better than ever with the salary cap, with the new rules, with the speed and the skill. And it's a great television product and the playoffs are off to a great start. Yeah. And, and working with, I mean, I can't even imagine like what it's like working with like Chelios and, and, <laughs> and those guys and just getting the, you know, just getting the wisdom. I love, I love just the the panel, whoever's on, if it's Weeksy or who, whoever it is, it's just, they're, they're just bringing an element to the game that uh the insight that's just it's it's just fantastic and and it's i you know it's to me it's never been better uh the play uh the coverage and and just appreciate it and and uh you know just giving you a background too this is i i don't know i i appreciate sports casters you know like i said i grew up with chuck kate and rick peckham Yep. And um, even it's funny, listen to Sean McDonough. Uh, it, he was he was like the Red Sox yeah. for so long. And being yep. a Yankees fan, you know, it's, <laughs> it's 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 a little bit different. But but just a professional and just 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 great. Uh, great to hear Barry Melrose. All you guys, you know, are, are, are killing it. And um, so, no, it's 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 great. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun ride to get to know those guys. Like you said, Mark Mestier and obviously Ferraro and Melrose, and they become really good friends. And you spend so much time together, hanging out late nights. That uh, it's really a it's it's really been a, a rich life that way. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about now. I don't know if you what now. Your t- do you have a team? Because I think I it's, don't really. I grew okay. up a Bruins fan with my dad, team. but uh, but once you start covering the league, you really yeah. start rooting for people and friends and Ray Ferraro and, and yeah. things like that. So you, you, you kind of lose that big, intense fandom that you had as a kid. At least I have, maybe other people hold on to it, but for me, I, I've kind of lost that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you, what was your take on, on the Bruins uh, getting ousted with the, with the best record yeah. overall? I know the president's trophy seems to be kind of a, you know, a, a jinx at this point, but yeah. Um, so the Panthers were a good team last year. So, you know, they're a hundred point team. So yeah, make it, make a trade, a big trade, but Matthew Kachuk is obviously more of a playoff guy. So when you look at it that way, and then you get a hot goalie who's won two residents before who got yeah. hot, then you see yeah, not a huge surprise. And if Brad Marchand scores that breakaway goal, the Bruins win in five. Right. It's just funny how it goes from I mean, winning in five with one goal or losing in seven. So yeah, it, it's a, it, it's a strange sport when you get a hot goalie. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, and I think that's what makes it exciting. And, and, you know, it's interesting too, because no Crosby and no Ovechkin, I, yes. I, I don't even know the, the, the stats on that, but when was the last time both teams didn't make it, you know, it's, that's, great. That, that's a good call it has to be obviously Crosby uh, entered the league in 2005 and they missed his first year, but they've made every year since, every year, so, right. you yeah. know, and then obviously Ovechkin arrived the same year. And his team didn't make the postseason either. So it would have been, yeah, it would have been, you know, from 2005 on, uh, 2006 on, one of them were in there every year. So, yeah, this is the first year since Crosby's rookie year that, that uh, neither of them were in it. 
Yeah. And now you have McDavid and Matthews yep. still in it, you know, best two, you know, I think you Jack know, Eichel too. Yep. Eichel, Jack Eichel as well. For sure. Oh, there's definitely, yeah, there's talent. I mean, you talk about Kachuk. I mean, Kachuk, yep. you know, I, I used to love watching Keith Kachuk play, man. It was, yeah. like, you know, to, so to see his son out there and, you know, crushing. I mean, he's, he's a gamer, you know, he's, yep. he's getting into the, the gritty areas and, and doing Absolutely. Really it's you know it's 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 just it's awesome and you know i personally since you know seeing some of the the teams the upsets now it's almost like for me for a fan i would like to see that matt it would be great to see edmonton toronto in the finals yeah, yeah i mean I'm, I'm the same way that would be i think great for the sport to, to high, even though it's two canadian teams in america that doesn't always rate the best for us yeah. But it would be, it would be uh, in terms of getting those two guys out there more because a lot of America doesn't see them because they are in Canada right. and especially McDavid, he's in a different time zone. So yeah, that that's kind of that's kind of what I'm hoping for too. But both teams are down in the series right now and got got some work to do. They do, yeah, they do. Um, so yeah, let, let's talk about your your uh, the Bucci overtime challenge, right? So this is yeah. you know what you you're up to. I mean, I think twenty five twenty five hundred uh, thousand in donations. Um, given back to you know hockey related uh, charities and just the, the game itself it's the best thing on twitter you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, just, just a very elementary simple thing we did back in the nhl tonight days you know me melrose and ferraro would be on the set a game goes to overtime and our show would start after the last playoff game so if that game goes to overtime then we have to wait till the game is over so we don't know when we're going to go on. So we would just throw a dollar on the set, pick a guy in each team. And if the guy happened to score, your guy, you just take the other two bucks, put it in your pocket, and we start the show. If you know, if no one's had the guy who scored, we just put our own dollar back in our pocket, start the show. Yeah. So once, obviously, we lost the NHL, then Twitter came along. It was like 2011, I think. I was just in the um, – a game went to overtime. I was like, oh, we still play that game. And you're just trying to figure out Twitter, how it works what a hashtag is like all this new stuff on Twitter. So the game went to overtime during the playoffs. I just decided to say, Hey, pick one guy in each team and I'll retweet 10 winners. And I put this hashtag It's real clunky Bucci overtime challenge. It's kind of a long clunky, you know, hashtag that if you got a focus group together, would probably come up with something much shorter and much pithier, but maybe that's part of the charm. It's very clunky and literal. And I, and I, I remember the first time I did it and I retweeted like 10 people. And that at the time retweeting was big currency on Twitter. You know, people like to get retweeted. Yeah. So that seems to be, and, and then as it, I think the second time and third time, it just kept growing and growing. I see there's hundreds and hundreds of people are playing this. And then by the end of that playoff season, I'm like, I remember tweeting out, yeah, maybe I'll make some t-shirts and we'll give away some winners We'll give some t- like we'll give some winners some t-shirts and then I'll give you a chance to buy them and then we'll get and, the, and we'll give the money away to charity. So I was like, and I and I look at the replies and I figure enough people kind of responded saying, I would do that, I would do that, I would do that. So, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. So I buy a thousand t-shirts from small to uh, you know, com- uh, small, medium, large, extra large, double XL, uh, thousand total. So it was like four thousand bucks, it was like four bucks a t-shirt for a hundred percent cotton, you know, cheap t-shirt. Yeah. Just put hashtag Bucci Overtime Challenge. My high school friend Pete Potenzini made a logo, old school logo. He he kept throwing them out and they go, nah, that's not quite it. That's not quite it. And then he gave me kind of that, you know, old time hockey look logo. I said, that's perfect. That's exactly, there it is. That's exactly what, right. My buddy Pete made the high school friend. That's awesome. it, it's just kind of a good, you know, people like that old time hockey look. Yeah. So I yeah. Thought, all right. So, so I made these t-shirts because I hope I can sell these t-shirts. You know, I mean, that's 4,000 bucks for all these t-shirts in my house. And, Sure enough, next the following playoff season started to give out like some t-shirts, maybe to I don't know how many winners I'd pick, five, three, not really sure. And then put up a clunky website, you know, and you helped me with that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And then people people are sending money to my house. They're sending like cash and envelopes and and <laughs> stuff. Like, how's this working? You know, that is very primitive. But you know, I sold out the t-shirts and I got black ones the next time, and they sold out quicker. I could tell people like the black t-shirts better than the white t-shirts. Uh, you're proving that right now. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. and so and then I was like, wow, maybe I'll make hats. And then so then, then all these companies came at me, bar down and sauce hockey. They all want to be a part of it. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't what, what do you what do you mean be a part of it? I don't know what that means. I'm just a broadcaster trying to uh, figure this out. But then then but the bar down folks gave me a, a you know a mock-up of that hat you have there and just kind of like you know, like oh that's yeah, people will buy that. So I'll, yeah, I'll buy some of those. And then they sold and just the products just kept adding up and adding up and like you said, it, it it was happening so fast. I, m- I remember the first December I sold the following year. And then as the stuff was on and and um, at the first, and then you helped me, you linked me up with PayPal, and that really helped the sales as well. 
because and um instead of people sending checks and cash in envelopes yeah yeah right and, uh, and then the first december i sold like twenty thousand dollars worth of merchandise i couldn't believe it they were just out of my house me going to the post office and everything and then of course i got stamps.com how much more convenient that was just to drop off the packages don't wait in line with my yeah. 10 t-shirts to get individually mailed by the post office person and, and metered and weighed and so it's just yeah it's so fun looking back what a joke i was early on and how it just kind of grew and yeah and so we've given away over a quarter of a million dollars of uh, all those you know receipts and uh it's it, it has the sales have definitely slowed down a little bit i think because i think one reason why is because i haven't offered really new products because as you know that takes effort and time and sure. it takes it's a little bit of risk involved what do you buy and then uh because i think i have a pretty good core audience but i think they've already bought everything so there's nothing there's nothing new yeah. for them to buy if yeah. i offered more like i started selling these these parm hats that say just chicken parm on it and those have been doing really well i sell out I, i'd buy 100 and they sell out in two weeks and i wow. got more color more colors coming so as you know in any business it does a restaurant or merchandise yeah. you, you need new things all the time yeah. yeah once you build that core audience i just haven't you know it does take work it's been a while now it's a lot of stuff in my house and and uh so you know who knows maybe i'll get a second win but for the meantime that and the college hockey stuff has been a nice it's it's, it's steady it's not huge anymore but it's it's steady yeah. and uh do, doesn't really cost me too much and the only thing you know i give out these winners and we've had what 15 overtimes i think and so yeah. it's about i give away five winners now this post yet yeah, that's 75 that's yeah that's that's four bucks every time i mail a t-shirt so you know i'm in the hundreds of dollars now that i'm spending on postage to send out these t-shirts and i haven't quite made it back with sales so i need to i need to do a better job of that but yeah it's been fun it's been a way to connect with people these last 10 years a little different creative muscle i've mm -hmm. always liked to make things fun when i was in college i would rank all the intramural teams uh after their games and put them on the cafeteria door and people used to love to look and see what the rankings were with little comments and I always just kind of want to make those, you know, create those kind of things and make those fun kinds of things. And had a street hockey league in high school once. And I made I'd make a newspaper, like an eight, nine page newspaper with standings and stats and yeah. team team reports called the hockey news. And that would get passed around in high school. It, someone reading the pass on to another guy. We had four teams, you know, six, seven guys, so about 40 of us. And that would get passed around. I still have a couple of those copies at home. They're kind of fun to look at. I used to write them out in a flare pen, just, you know, print them out with a flare pen and write these articles and stuff. And that was, you know, it was a precursor of my career. You know, sure. at the time yeah. I did, I just did it for fun, but I was kind of exercising a muscle that in time would serve me well. Yeah. Yeah. For, we could, oh, Hey, we can always repackage this and there you go. Bucci overtime uh, juice you know? <laughs> sauce. That's right. The yeah. Sauce sauce powered by hockey soda. You know, I love um, it. I, lo I love, well, I love the, the competition online with, I, I love reading some of the feedback after the winners are announced right. and you get these, you get these, these rookies, we'll call them that are like, Hey, <laughs> I got it right. Blah, blah, blah. And then you get the rebuttal. Like, Hey, I've been waiting nine years yeah. to win a hat. So don't talk to me about like you, you got the last two, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. That, that, that that's a whole other industry are the, are the gifts or gifs, whatever pronunciation you prefer. At, at the disappointment so and i'll retweet those and i think they get much as a, a kick out of that yeah if they want if sometimes they, won. They, 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 they like losing but it's fun you know i so someone will win i'll retweet five people then i go in their direct message and i'll just say hey congrats name address t-shirt size and i cut and paste that so every time I, I can just boom 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 and it's just so great to see these replies from people i've been waiting six years this is the most amazing day of my life it's like well, it's so funny how that's it still does resonate a little bit it's, but but I, part of it is it's only once a year right it's only for about a month and a half and then it recharges it's not really a regular season game because it's right. a five minute three on three overtime then a shootout it doesn't really work it really is built for the playoffs right so the fact that it's just around for a month and a half or so once a year I think that's probably a big reason that has kept it, you know, kind of fresh. But I was thinking maybe maybe for next year, maybe I'll just make like a, a, a T-shirt with the year on it. So like, you know, the, and, and then give those out as a prize and maybe mm -hmm. offer to sell. That way it's a new shirt, but it's a little bit different. Same logo, but just a little bit of a twist. As you know, any business about marketing, it's about ideas. So maybe I put like, you know, a certified a T-shirt that only the winners get that I mail to them. Sure, and then uh, with with a name on it or with a year or something like that to, to yeah. maybe kind certified of, uh, winner or something certified like winner, right? And yeah, something like that. So that so some sort of a you know a new product that kind of signifies the year might be a good idea, maybe to pick up sales again. Yeah, yeah. Now just a transition here. So you know, mindset is obviously something like I, I've been working through and in, in yep. professional development and. 
Um, when, when we were working together on hockey soda, I mean, I was overweight. I was going through the loss of my dad. There was just a lot of things going on. It was almost a perfect storm of a lot of things. And um, so, so again, I, I've been on this, this journey, if you will, and just trying to find all the different tools and techniques to just be healthier mentally, physically. And, and one of the things, you know, I noticed in our relationship was, you know, you're always in, 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 in top shape. You, you golf quite a bit. So tell us a little bit about, and but you're also traveling all the time. So to me, there's a lot of stress and, you know, wear and tear and your routine is probably off more than, more than yep. not. Like, how do you, what does a day or a week kind of look like for, for you to, to kind of stay in that, that mindset of, of just keep moving yeah. forward? Yeah, that is difficult because I didn't really travel very much at all for most of my ESPN career. You know, when we, we didn't have hockey, I just did Sports Center, mm. so I was very local. Very maybe maybe traveled once or twice a year for work, uh, but now, yeah, it's a little different now. I don't do a lot of games, but I did like fifteen to twenty maybe this year. Um, and then also, I, I live in Massachusetts, but drive to Connecticut for work. So if I'm there for more than one day in a row, I'll, I'll, I have to get my own hotel and uh, stay there, then come back. So that that does get that can get in the way, but I'm better in Connecticut because, you know, there's multiple gyms there that, you know, I'm a, I'm a nationwide LA fitness uh, okay. member. When I joined it in South Windsor, Connecticut, I, the gym just opened. So I, I didn't even know I had a, a, a nationwide membership. It was 35 bucks a month. That seemed like, I thought it was just at one gym, but come to find out. So, you know, there's multiple of those in Connecticut. And uh, when I, and uh, when I go down to Florida in Naples, Florida, where I have a place, there's two LA fitnesses there. So I'm able to, you know, do that during the day and craft my day around that, having a breakfast and hit there, maybe a good meal. And, then, and, and since I work nights, I have all day, so I, I can keep that. But when you're traveling on the road and the hotel gym isn't great, you're a little tired. Uh, maybe I, So what I try to do now is I try to work out really hard at home when I'm home or in that routine of, of familiar gyms. And I use the road now for rest, just for rest days, because I do have a I am susceptible to overtrain. Mm. Uh, once I get in the gym, I, I love the gym. When I leave, I can't wait to go the next day already. I look forward to the next day. As soon as I leave the same day, yeah. um, I can't get enough. I just love the music and the atmosphere and, and watching other people work hard. Uh, I, I get inspired by people who, whether they're 80 years old or whether they're you know 19 years old or whatever, just trying to stay healthy and be healthy or get healthy. And uh, that is, so I just love that whole atmosphere being around those kinds of like-minded people. Like I said, the music, playlist that I play. I love music. It's always inspired me. Mm -hmm. And just the exertion, you know, when you play sports, like I did growing up, play everything all 12 months a year till you're 18, 19, 20, 21. Um, then that ends. The gym became my sport. That's how I, to, to see progress, to feel progress, uh, to exert, to get, you know, to improve. You know, I always sports and fitness and nutrition, it all just, just naturally went together for me. It just makes sense. If you want to play a sport, you want to be the best at it. Wouldn't you want to be as strong as you can be or as healthy as you can be? That just that would just improve performance, which then would improve the chance of winning and improve the chance of joy. So yeah. and it, was, it, was, it was all connected to me. So my mindset is always one of a self improver, and and pretty emotional and and be inspired by things and being motivated by those kind of emotional things. Sure. Yeah. And that, now, is there is there one particular habit like a daily routine or habit that is kind of an anchor for you like if if all other habits kind of fall apart or whatever if you know is there one like for me it's like I have to get a run in in the morning like for me that sets the day for me and, and even like nutrition wise I tend to eat better the whole yeah. thing if I miss that run in the morning I could still do good, but it's like, it's, it kind of throws me off. Is there, is there something like for you or? Yeah, I'm not a runner. I tried, but just, it, I never caught that bug and, uh, and being six, four and long limbed, it never was really easy or enjoyable for me. <laughs> uh, people think I run, but I don't. So I, I look like a runner without running. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, cause you're, you're slim, but yet, you know, built. So yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm just lean. You know, I've always been lean. I've been a hard gainer. It's been hard to gain weight, hard to gain muscle. So I've really had to work hard at it uh, starting at a young age. You know, I've been doing it now really for about what, almost about 40. You know, I started when I was 20. So yeah, about 38 years now I've been working out very consistently. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I just, I wake up and the first thing I do is I pray. 
I, I'm just thankful that I'm breathing. That's literally the first thing I do is say thank you seven times. Yeah. Thank, thank you for just just the fact I'm breathing right now. Wow, okay. Yeah. So that that that's what gets me going. Yeah. And um and then I just you know then I get up I get my banana, and um, and that's I like I cause I like to go to the gym with just a little bit in my stomach, not a lot. So usually a banana is all I really need, and and five scoops of of, of yogurt. You know, with sometimes high fat, sometimes I go back and forth, but usually a good high protein, sixteen, you know, gram, uh, five big scoops gives you about eighteen grams of protein. A banana, and then I get my pre workout drink and and um and my branch chain amino acid drink, which I'll drink during. So I'll drink the free work on the way that kind of gives me my caffeine a little bit. And, um, and then I have a, a, a drink I drink during the workout and that's got, then I come home. That's what, and then I come home and have my big breakfast or, you know, four or five eggs and, uh, sometimes sausage, but usually it's just the four or five eggs, uh, with a little heavy whipping cream. And that's kind of like how I, that's kind of like my routine. So that banana yogurt workout and then the post-workout eggs and, and maybe one other thing. And then, then I'm kind of good to go. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's good too, because that's right. You have that that morning. To yeah, yourself. yeah, yeah. I've moment. always had mornings and days because I have a night job. So yeah. that's that's how. It, so it's and so to me in some ways that's probably easy. Um, but if I didn't have that, I'd figure it out. You know, I'd, I'd go work because I yeah, I, I used to always work out at night when I was younger. Just kidding. now I can't imagine going to the gym at seven o'clock at night. Right? right. I'd rather go early. I'd rather go seven o'clock in the morning. I'm more of a morning person now. I'm very much an insomniac, night owl, overactive mind as a young person. Now I'm more of a. I, I don't. I'd rather get up early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and that and actually that's it's twofold, right? So you don't you're not getting up for. Uh, work you're getting up to, yep. to to work out and and get those you know get the reps in and 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 start your day so that's yeah that's, right that's fantastic yep what's your prediction for for the stanley cup who who are you who i know you, you get you got to be down the middle but if you if you had to yeah who 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 do you think is gonna the, the matchup yeah, for yeah, the finals? Yeah, yeah, those, yeah those always have a couple answers you know when I, you know but my pre-playoff prediction was toronto edmonton like you said matthews okay. mcdavid that part of that might have been the, the marketing man in me. Like, yeah, that, I think that'd be good to see. It'd be cool to see, uh, as opposed to what I really think will happen. And then there's obviously, you know, we don't have the Stanley Cup finals this year. ESPN, TNT does. We go back and forth. So like last year when I knew we were going to have it, like it was like, where do I want to go? Where do I want to travel to? So, you know, when the finals are coming up, we root, we, we want to go to two cool places, you know, right. two, two Vegas cities. Vegas and uh, – Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Vegas. New York city or really? Vegas and, you know, Tampa, we know it's going to be warm, but it's going to be too warm. Um, so yeah, you kind of pick the destinations on, on, on where you want to be. And, uh, and so, you know, last year it was Denver and it was Tampa Bay. That was pretty cool. Denver's a cool city and uh, some fun stuff to do there. Very warm. And then Tampa, you know, again, we, again, you know, it's going to be warm, but it was actually very nice last year in Tampa. It wasn't too humid. Mm -hmm. Because remember, remember last year, the finals were in late June because the schedule was still off a bit because of COVID. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah. So you root for this. You, you, you don't really want like an Ottawa versus <laughs> you know, up, you're up Winnipeg in, final. Winnipeg. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That would probably be 32 on the list would be Winnipeg, even in June. That definitely is better than February. So not terrible in June. So yeah. So when you're, when you're covering the sport, you root for the cities that you want to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, it's been Bucci. It's been great uh, catching up and I, I appreciate yes. again. It's, it's been uh it's an honor talking to you. It's a, it's a privilege. I, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I enjoy, you know, broadcasting in general. It's, it's, you know, gr growing up, like I said, it's uh, you know, listening to uh, you know, Chuck Caton and, and Rick yeah. Beckham and um, even John Forslund, he was yeah. the, the, the Whalers guy for a little bit, then, you know, moved yep. to Carolina. Now he's with the, the, the Kraken. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, that was a tough adjustment for me too. Just him yeah, coming, the, getting replacing Rick Beckham. I'll, I'll close my eyes and listen to a Tampa Bay game sometimes, and I'll have flashbacks to the Whalers. You know, just listening sure. to Rick Beckham. But, um, but yeah, so it's just a just a pleasure talking to you, and just appreciate uh, you know uh, just covering ho the sport of hockey and just being a true uh, ambassador for for the sport, and uh, and just appreciate you being a friend and and uh, I. Hopefully we'll 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 swing the clubs uh, soon. Right. If if you come down here to Florida, or maybe I'll be up in, in Connecticut soon, and, and we can connect in person. No, it sounds good. Like that's that's one of the best parts of this job is meeting hockey people and getting to know hockey people. They're fun. And again, thanks for all your help for the early Bucci overtime challenge days and pointing me in the right direction to help deal with all the with the new uh, thing I was doing. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, you were right there at the beginning. So uh, thanks to you.
Well, it's the least the least I could do. And, and <laughs> for, for anyone watching that, that isn't aware, uh, BucciOT.com. Uh, if you're on Twitter, uh, hashtag Bucci Overtime Challenge. Any any oh. game that goes in overtime during this playoffs, just just look for for his account. Uh, search the hashtag, and yep. who knows, you might end up with a hat. Now, I didn't I didn't win <laughs> I didn't win this hat, so this is not. It's like it's like touching the Stanley Cup without yeah. winning it. That um, hat sold out. There's no more of those around. They, they sold out. So that's a that's a collector's collector's item, item got, and that's look at the tag on it. Yes, tag and everything. You know, I yeah. I, I think <laughs> I had a couple. I wore the other one out. You know, the there other one's go. somewhere um, probably has like mold on it for me sweating it. I mean, that's gross. But um, <laughs> but no, uh, again, uh, Bucci, this is this has been fantastic. If, if anyone wants this hat, you can't get this hat. I'm not giving it away. Yeah, um, I didn't earn it, but that's OK, because I All have right. one. Um, I, I, I tell people you can buy something and told people you're one. You're allowed to lie. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I endorse that. Yeah. Well, again, it's a, it's been a pleasure, and uh, and look forward to connecting soon, John, and, and have a great uh, have a great rest of the playoffs. I know you got the draft. Are you hosting the draft on Monday too? Uh, the, the lottery draft. I'll be doing that. The, the, just the NHL draft lotteries, eight o'clock this Monday. Yep, and then the draft this year is in Nashville in late June. Haven't heard if I'm doing that okay. or not, but that'd be great if I did. But yeah, I, I will be hosting. So okay. Kevin Weeks will be in New York with the commissioner and the ping pong balls and everything. I'll be in Connecticut in the studio. Uh, Send it out to Kevin, who will be in New York for the actual draft lottery on ESPN, eight o'clock Monday night. Eight o'clock Monday night, awesome. Well, right. we'll, see, we'll see you. We'll see you on the, on the TV, on the tubes, and uh, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good, Joey. Thanks, bud. All right, take care.